I don't know if we've ever done a live, a live feed on Facebook before with a Zoom. All right. I think that's, I think we're ready to get started. So it looks like nobody's actually coming to our Zoom room yet, but um, folks could very well be joining us on Facebook. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, my name is Tracy Hansen, and I'm moderating tonight's elementary parent panel. Thank you so much to our elementary parents for joining us tonight. Um, we also have Emily Logan, who is joining us as well, and she's going to be moderating the questions in the chat um, with our Facebook group. So um, I just wanted to go ahead and get started and have our elementary parents introduce themselves, if you don't mind. Just go ahead and tell us your name, uh, the grade levels of your children, and how long you've been with us at ASU Prep Digital. You can start, anyone can start. Just jump in. Hi, my name's Abby. Um, I, um, this is our third year going into ASU Prep Digital. I have two kids who are attending, my youngest is going into fifth grade, and my oldest is going into seventh grade. Um, he's actually going into Khan World School at ASU Prep Digital this year for the first time, so we're excited about that. Um, and we love ASU Prep Digital. <laughs> That's awesome. And how long have you been here? Did you mention that? This is going to be our third year. That's right, your third year. You said that. Yes. Awesome. All right, who's going to be next? Hi, I'm Adrienne Lushevko. My daughter is Kylie Lushevko. She's going into fifth grade. Um, we have been with ASU Prop uh, Digital since November of this past year. Um, we absolutely love it. And um, my daughter had an opportunity to go back to regular school and she said, absolutely not. I want to be here. And she loves the teachers and she loves her LSC and she loves her classes. Awesome. Thank you. Hi, I'm Gary and Van Paris. I have two boys who go to ASU. Um, they are going into third and fourth grade. It'll be our second year at ASU and they... Again, they love it. They don't want to go back to brick and mortar. So, very good. Hey, I'm Victoria, and I my son will be in going into fifth grade. This is our will be his fourth year at ASU Prep Digital. Um, we've been there since August 2020, and um, he absolutely loves it too. So we always kind of revisit each year, and it's like, how are we doing? How are we feeling? And he keeps wanting to come back, <laughs> and we love it too as a family. And fun fact, Victoria is also one of our elementary teachers. And Leah? Hi, my name is Leah. My daughter Miriam is going into second grade. And um, we've been with ASU since the beginning with kindergarten for her. Um, and so I don't, I don't know that we would want to go <laughs> to in mortar after um, our wonderful experiences with the teachers at ASU and it just, it's a system that really seems to work well for her. Very good. Um, now this event is going to be um, really casual. Uh, it's a question and answer type setup. So if you have any questions as you're joining us, um, whether it be from Facebook or from our Zoom session, please feel free just to go ahead and put those in the, in the chat and we will make sure that we um, put them in the queue to answer them. And so it sounds like um, a, a lot of you have, were probably driven to, prep digital, maybe during pandemic times, but um, I'd just like to hear a little bit more about what led you to ASU prep digital specifically. I mean, there's a lot of online providers out there, right? There's, there's a, seems like to be an online school around um, every corner. Um, and so what led you to ASU prep digital and then what made you stay, especially if you came for, for during the pandemic time? I'm happy to start. Um, so when, of course, the world seemed to um, change in March 2020, um, we were sent home from school and um, we kind of realized that we liked it, that we liked doing the learning from home. Um, we unfortunately chose to go with our school district's online program for our first year at home. So starting in August of 2020, um, and that was not a great experience for us. 
Um, it didn't put us off going, sticking with online, but I'm so happy that we um, looked into other options and decided to try out ASU Prep Digital because it was such a night and day difference from the experience that we had had with our um, district's online program. And it has just been a wonderful experience all around. My kids have really thrived. Um, we're so excited to be going into our third year and really um, aren't looking back. We've had, before each year, we had sit down conversations with our kids and talked about the pros and cons of sticking with online school or going back in person. And they've really been, really been happy with online. Um, my son especially has just thrived in the online environment. Um, but it's been great for us all, really. Thank you so much for sharing. Anybody else want to share that one? I'll share. Um, so we we had Miriam um, in a wait list to go to Basis, which is a local math and science school here. Um, and so we were all set like to actually do that. And um, we got a letter from the school saying if there was a recurrence of the pandemic um, that they had no system in place. And so we were kind of concerned like, well, that's weird. <laughs> and mm -hmm. so, um, you know, it, it led me to look for other choices and other options. And prior to her um, researching for kindergarten for her, um, we were doing already doing basically an on um, at home um, Montessori esque homeschool system between me and her, um, and so I was looking more at you know online slash micro school things, and I saw an ad actually um, for ASU Prep Digital. Um, I don't remember where I saw it. It could have been Facebook, and um, then it just led me to doing more research. And what I loved um, in my research was that this ASU, the university prepares their teachers like to kind of to filter them into the system and that there were so many good reviews. And so it really just seemed like all of the horror stories of my friends whose kids had to go and do at home learning um, through the school system um, that you guys kind of figured out how to avoid all of that mess and that it was pretty much like you had it down to a science. So I said, well, you know what, this was really um, kind of what we were looking for. Um, if there's a, if she's in at home learning and, or I mean, if she's at like brick and mortar learning, and then she suddenly removed from that for whatever reason, you know, that's just chaotic. It's not inducive to education. Um, so we just decided to go with the system that seemed to be the most um, smooth transition that would allow her from the beginning to the end, just focus on learning. And so that's, that's how we came to ASU. Wonderful, thank you. Anybody else like to share? If you're just joining us, um, this is a very casual conversation with some of our elementary school parents. Please feel free to drop your questions in our chat area and we will go ahead and filter them in. Um, but this just is very, very casual, just conversation tonight. So, so we'll be happy to answer your questions as they come about. All right, anyone else wanna share how they came to ASU Prep? Yeah, so I was just going to share how um, what made us stay because I know you asked oh, that perfect. before. Perfect. Yes, we like we would love, love that. To know. <laughs> and so, really, what the other um, moms have been saying too, it's just um, my son really thrives in this environment. It was kind of night and day from previous experiences. So um, he was just kind of telling me all these facts, you know, about school. It was like, Mom, did you know? Da -da 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 -da? And Mom, did you know? Da -da -da -da? And it was just I kind of saw. Um, uh, I, I just saw this like burst of like renewed, like love of learning because he had it and it was kind of diminishing a little bit. And then it just all of a sudden was like, like renewed. And so it, it just made my mom heart happy. And 
Um, I, you know, I loved that. I was like, wow, he's really thriving. He's learning. He's doing so well in this environment. Um, he loves his teachers. He loves his LSC. He loves his classmates. Um, and so uh, that's really kind of what's kept us there. And, and, and the fact that he's able to um, you know, be at home, whether it's with, you know, with me or with dad, and he's able, you know, to have that extra time as well, um, that we wouldn't have if he were in brick and mortar. And the fact that, um, and, and the fact that it's flexible, you know, so he's able to kind of like work on his assignments, but hey, let's step back a little bit, take a brain break, let's go do some physical activity, or, you know, let's do a science experiment, and then come back to, you know, our required assignments again, and activities and things like that. So it kind of really allows him to focus as well. And also to um, kind of learn that, you know, um, you know, learn those like, like skills that you'll need as an adult as well, as far as like schedules and stuff like that. It's like, oh, we're able to teach him like, hey, this is like a schedule or let's do, you know, part one today, part two tomorrow. And these are skills that you'll need like in the, in, in careers and, and, you know, working in the field and everything. So I think that, um, that that's really helpful too. And the teachers, you know, help them along with that. The playlist really explicitly says like, oh, let's, you know, break it up if it's a project, a long-term project, and then do a little bit at a time so it's not overwhelming and then we're not waiting till the last minute and procrastinating. So it's really helping build those skills as well um, and really teaching him, you know, how to go about his day and 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 have that love for learning. And, and we can see it in, you know, in his activities and we can see it in his test scores and all that kind of stuff that, um, that he's doing great and we're so happy for it. Love hearing that. It's so pretty exciting when you see your kids getting excited about learning, right? I mean, how many times have your kids in the past, you, you know, you say, well, what did you learn today? Nothing, <laughs> right? I think I've heard of that from my, my kids at, at least, uh, you know, a hundred times over the years. So it's nice that they can, you know, pinpoint certain events and, and activities that are really speaking to to him. Anyone else want to share what makes them stay at ASU Prep? So we're staying at ASU Prep. Um, Ghost on Devils, I graduated from there. So oh, there- <laughs> <laughs> my husband graduated from U of A, so we're house divided, but I oh. won because the boys go to ASU. So we're, <laughs> we're majority. Um, it's just great for us. And selfishly as a parent, um, I like experiencing that with my kids during the day, like when they're working on their assignments or if they're in their um, spark time or something. And at one point I was like, are you in class? Like, are you, did you leave your meeting? And my oldest was like, no, 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 no. Like that's what we're supposed to be doing in our small group right now. And I was like, that's amazing. And I, then I had to spy because I was like, that's so cool that they're getting these social experiences from our house and I can see it. Like, I'm like that. It, it just made me so happy. And he loves it. And my youngest loves it. Um, my youngest is like, can I have his teacher next year? Like already trying to like figure it out because he saw how much fun his older brother had. And I was like, I don't know, but you'll have a great teacher. <laughs> so they're very excited. Very good. All right, Adrian, do you want to share? Absolutely. So we came post pandemic mm -hmm. and we went through our school system during the pandemic. I really rode my kid through it and she came out ahead, but they were teaching to the lowest denominator. And so she ended up um, being at school bored because they literally couldn't give her enough work to do. And I had talked to a few parents that I knew that left our school district. And um, I talked to a few swim parents because my daughter does competitive swim. And so I, I was asking about different programs and how they worked and how, you know, different things went. Um, and so we came, you know, we stumbled upon ASU prep and I said, Let, let's just try it. You're waitlisted anyways for great hearts. Like, let's just see what happens. And if you absolutely hate it, you can always go back to brick and mortar. And she started the program and she just loved it. She thrives in the environment. She thrives that she can, um, take her own time and, and, and kind of like take her brain breaks when she needs them, not when someone else needs them. She also has like, um, a stomach issue that prevents her from, um, processing her food within the first hour. So when she was at brick and mortar school, they wanted her to eat in 10 minutes and she was getting sick constantly. 
and the administration was not very helpful. And so it was just another thing. We we're like, why don't we try it? You really, you thrived well when you were at home um, before, you know, during the pandemic. So why don't we try it again and see what happens? And we have not we have not looked back. Like I said, there was a spot that opened up again at her old school and she was like, nope, I don't even want to go. And Great Hearts opened up and she's like, nope, I don't want to go. I just want to go to ASU prep. I get my time when I need it. And then it's also like everyone has said here, like the teachers are absolutely fantastic. Number one. Number two, the kids are fantastic that she's had in class. So we, I can't say enough. She talks to them now outside of school. And then also um, the other part that we like is the flexibility. And I do like being able to see what she's doing at home too, because just like um, other parents have said that like certain times things happen or they need to go to an orthodontist appointment or, you know, they have practice or, you know, maybe they're feeling sick, but not sick enough to, you know, where you have to shovel them off to school, but maybe they just need that hour in the morning to sleep in and, and just like refocus and get better and then they can do their work and and you can space it out which is amazing so we're going back to wisconsin when school starts and we can be there and we can see our family and we can come back so it works like it's the easiest program and like everyone else said like it is not what you experience through your brick and mortar school during the pandemic at all this is like top notch technology that these teachers are using and the breakout rooms and they are critically thinking and I can see it every day and my the love and the passion for learning has come back for my child so to me it made my ma mama heart warm and so when she said that's what she wanted to do I said absolutely you can go back so we have a lot of uh, families who actually do quite a bit of travel um because of all of the flexibility and I love it that you have a competitive um, swimmer and we do have a lot of students who have really like strong passions about their activities and the things that they do and they want to make sure that they can dedicate the time to be the best that they can be in that but not miss a beat at school too so the flexibility With that really quick I just want to chime in it's nice be, my kids are little but like they still have coding it's not okay you're at school from eight to three or however long they're in brick and mortar now. And then, okay, now let's go to coding for an hour after school. And then you're home for dinner at five. And then if you have any homework and then, okay, now it's time for bed. And then I don't see them at all. Like they're, so that, that flexibility is nice. It's like, okay, you do have an extracurricular, go to your meetings. We can work around it. If your extracurricular is at like two, you can do that because you're not at brick and mortar all day and then go back and like be a kid. Right. Yeah, that's huge for Absolutely. us. Um, so I, I think maybe some of you may have like echo kind of similar sentiments, but um, I'd love to hear a little bit about what is the typical day look like for you all. It sounds like obviously you have a lot of flexibility, so there's going to be a lot of variation there, but overall your kids are probably doing a lot of the similar activities. So if anyone wants to just chime in and just talk about what a typical day looks like, and then also what is your role in those day-to-day -day activities too? Okay. <laughs> um, so it's different actually for both of my kids because my daughter is in elementary and my son is in middle and um, the middle school is slightly different in how they plan their days out. So for elementary, they start in the morning with um, a couple of hours with lots of breaks in between and brain breaks um, with their with their teachers and their classmates. And um, those couple of hours that they do in the morning, um, that's where they get some live lessons from their teachers. They do small group activities. They might do um, fun projects. They, I see my kids a lot getting up and like dancing and moving and doing all sorts of stuff. So, I mean, they definitely are making sure that those kids are getting movement in their day. They're having a lot of fun. Um, I definitely hear a lot of small group activities happening where my kids are interacting with just the other kids in their class in small groups. Um, lots of working on projects. Um, so those, those two hours are a lot of their um, interaction with their groups. Now they also have specials once a week. They meet with their LSCs once a week. 
Um, you, there's clubs that they can join. So all of those things are going to be extra Zooms that might be at different times, depending on the grade level, depending on who your LSC is, depending on what your special is for the quarter. And this is all for elementary. Um, so those things are, yes, the random items for scavenger hunts. I just saw that, yes, they have to go run and find something that's red, you know, or find something that starts with L. So that's kind of fun. Um, so they, um, they have those extra Zooms and lots of fun things that happen throughout their day. And it makes it really easy to plan out your life because if you have lots of doctor's appointments or things that you need to do, you know when those things are happening. It's the same time of the same day every week. You might have some extra random things sprinkled in here or there. Um, and I also wanna make a point that the teachers are super available. So even though you only have those couple of hours with them in the morning, um, they all have office hours and um, I, we've never ever had a problem with sending a text or an email to the teacher and going, hey, do you have a couple of minutes to meet for X, Y, Z? And they are available super quickly. Um, that's been great for us. Um, my son who's in middle school, it's a little bit different. Um, there's four core classes plus the, their, um, their specials are, I, I don't think that's the right word, I forgot these, but that's a once a semester, um, that's a semester long one for middle school. Um, and so it's one hour a day for the live lessons with the teachers. They also have open office hours that are scheduled. Um, and the rest of the time they're working on independent work and it's all about, it's a mastery program. So most of the time, except for like, I think final exams in middle school, the kids have as many attempts as they need or want to do the work and to get help from their teachers and to turn it in and show that they know the concepts. Um, so even though they're doing work on their own, um, they really have as much support and help as they need to get it done. And um, Fortunately, I have um, an education background. I'm able to help my kids a little bit when it's needed, but I, none of my, are now our friends, we've made lots of friends through the program. A lot of their parents who don't have an education background don't have any problem helping their kids when they need it too. Plus, you know, they have learning pods, they have friends that they can talk to. You have your teachers available whenever you need them. Um, I do sit with my kids during the day while they're working and I'm working on my own computer. Um, so, you know, and when they need something, I'm there. Um, if they need help getting stuff together for a project, you know, that we have a lot of fun doing science projects together, stuff like that. So I'm, I'm feeling like I'm doing a little bit of elementary school too. It's kind of fun. <laughs> but all right, I'll let other people talk now. That's a little bit about how our, how our days go. Um, but they're fun. It's fun days and we have a good time. Awesome. Thank you. Anybody else like to share? Their day, anyone have their day look a little bit different? Um, our day look, it's it's similar. I would say that our days are similar. What um, one thing that really resonated that she said um, is that you can plan your day, you can plan your whole week around school, and that's just such a great thing. Um, and also in terms of um, the the kids, you know we we go to Taekwondo, my daughter's going to be a black belt in a few months. And so we're really dedicated to that. And so this system allows us to have build in practice time and, you know, go there twice a week, do what we need to do for that, do what we need to do for our Girl Scouts. But also she's getting all the time she needs for school too. Um, and it's, the flexibility is, is really great. Um, but as far as like what a day goes, looks like, um, so it's, it is a lot of fun and I, I see that she's having fun um, and every day is a little bit different. Uh, so, you know, there's huddle at first thing at eight o'clock in the morning, um, but even before that starts, um, she's able to have a full breakfast with her family instead of being rushed out the door. Um, which I think is so important. And then she um, she gets to join for huddle. I love that the teachers um, recognize what, because they're not overwhelmed with all of these other things that are not education related or child related, that they can recognize what each individual child needs and give it to them. Um, so I think that that's 
really valuable. And I've seen that um, just through both from kindergarten and first grade that, you know, all the kids, not just my child is getting what they need in the class. And I think that's great. Um, so after huddle, um, when, you know, they get together, they do what they do in huddle with, you know, the songs and getting up and dancing and moving around and the um, pledge. And then um, they have their live lesson, which also, um, you know, I, one of the parents said random scavenger hunt. So they're, they're getting around, they're moving and everything. Um, and then the homework or the, you know, it's, I wouldn't call it homework because they're already at home. So, you know, the, the independent classwork is, um, it's so easy to maneuver that. So for my daughter, she's able to do her work and get everything that she needs to get done. Like for Seesaw, uh, all her class assignments, most of it she can have done by like Wednesday. And then she can have like, there's usually what I've found um, is that they give a, like a big project, one big project that kind of ties everything together um, that's due by Friday. And so she can go as big as she wants and have lots of time to really work on that, which I I find is something she wouldn't be able to do if she were in a public school system or, you know, like a brick and mortar system because of time constraints or material constraints. So she's, she's able to basically, if she's got a big idea in her brain, she can get it out and, you know, turn it in. And it makes her feel really good about, um, about her, what she's learning and just about herself, like every day and every week. So, um, yeah. These success stories make my heart so happy. <laughs> really do. Does anybody else have anything else they want to share about their day? Should we go into the next? Anything unique um, and different? I just, it's not really unique. I think all of the parents here have experienced it and how helpful it is getting the upcoming schedule, up getting, getting the playlist and where the printables are located. And if you don't want to print, we have this alternative, like this alternative. So my boys, like they know how to get to it. They can pull up their slides that, so they know what's upcoming. And then if there's materials needed, it's outlined. And I think there was one where it was like, next month we're doing this just a heads <laughs> up. And I was like, that's amazing because I'm probably going to forget. So at least I have that reminder and it's just the heads up and just being able to plan that way for like, what's upcoming? What are we going to need? What printables? Um, learning seesaw was interesting for me as a parent because I'm like, what? But my second grader did it fine. I was like, okay, you can, you've got it. I can handle canvas, but seesaw, I was like, whoo, <laughs> um, but it was great. That's funny. I was going to ask you that, you know, you said your boys knew, knew where to go right away. Was there a learning curve for anyone as you were getting started? And what did, what did that look like? Um, so my boys were in a different online program before coming to ASU. So learning the different pro different platform was interesting, but once they got into it and got into Canvas and got into Seesaw, it was great. The intro week was really helpful coming to ASU, like how to submit things, how to upload. So it didn't feel like that first official week was a ton of pressure. It was mm -hmm. just like learning how to submit, upload, logins. Um, that was, I love that as a parent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say that too, the same thing about the the orientation week for, um, you know, that first week before school started, that they gave the kids an opportunity to maneuver through the system and do kind of the practice assignments mm -hmm. and see if, you know, make sure they knew how to submit everything. Um, it took me a little bit longer to figure it out than um, my kids, just because you know, they were in it every day. So me trying to go hunt and find something um, that um, I would see as my own, in my own Canvas account, as my observer account, um, to try and look at my kids' work and stuff like that, that I had to figure that out, but I've got it down now. <laughs> I have all the <laughs> notifications set up. Every time my kids get something graded, it's emailed to me, you know, so I can look at it all whenever I have the the time or desire to do so. And um yeah, it's really, they, they figured it out really quickly. Kids are so savvy. Adrian, you um, jumped in the year, like you started a little bit later. So how was that experience? Because your daughter did not start on the first day of school. Was it a little bit of a, of a different it, experience? 
It it was, it was. So it took us about three weeks to really fall into everything and really get an idea of where everything was. Um, we were a little stressed out, but like we made it through with the help of our teachers and they were phenomenal. And I'm like, okay, so we've used Canvas, but we have not used this Canvas because this Canvas <laughs> is amazing, first of all. And so I'm like, so I just want to make sure what we're doing is correct. And, and like, if, and then finally I kind of let the reins go to my daughter and I said, you know what, you need to like, learn to reach out to your teacher and say, Hey, and so she would just email, or I would say, Hey, let's just email her. This is how you should email your teacher. And, and so we would, we kind of drafted an email together and we would say, okay, you know, I'm having this problem. And then if there was a problem with, you know, a schoolwork, or maybe she was like, I'm, I'm a little bit behind in this, or I'm ahead in this, or wherever we were, or just using the technology, the teachers were always like, no problem. Let's find a time that works for you and me, and we will get it solved. And we got it solved. And so it really, it really worked flawlessly once we got to know like, okay, so for this project, we need to like, you know, put these different things in there. And so once we knew what we were like looking at, like I said, it maybe took us three weeks. I love the coaching you did for the, the self-advocacy and, and emailing the teacher on her own. Cause I think that that's so important in the online space is to give your, your children that guidance and, um, I wish I did that with my kids a lot younger. So I love it that you guys are doing that in elementary school. That's fantastic. Um, I'd love to hear a little bit about how um, your kids socialize with other with other children. You know, some there's some folks who um, maybe critics of online learning really kind of say you know kids aren't getting enough socialization. But it sounds like all of your kids are pretty active in other activities. So what does that look like? You know, as far as your your, your child interacting with other kids. You know, are you finding socialization opportunities and are you finding socialization um, opportunities within ASU Prep Digital itself? I think, um, you know what, I the people, the critics of online schooling for the lack of socialization, I, I sometimes wonder what is their definition of socialization? Mm -hmm. Because I, I used to teach and I saw brick and mortar socialization. And I would say that that is not true socialization. And so as far as my daughter is concerned, we have, um, we have her in Taekwondo, like I mentioned. Um, she's also very active in the Girl Scouting community. Um, she's very active in our public library. And I've seen a lot of um, other children who we, we socialize with who do go to brick and mortar, they're always so tired. Mm -hmm. So not only are they tired, but they're, they're kind of like run down in an emotional way because of the bullying that they have to deal with, which is mm -hmm. something that, um, you know, I don't, I wouldn't say that through um, it, my daughter going to ASU Prep Digital that we're um, sheltering her from bullying, but I think we're just minimizing that exposure, you know, because she, she has a, because of our system, like, or I should say the ASU digital system, she doesn't have to deal with, um, people making fun of her for continually answering questions correctly, you know, which, no kid should have to deal with that. If they're, if they love learning, they should be encouraged, not, you know, bullied. And, um, my daughter has a hearing sensitivity. And so, you know, and one thing that we were concerned about with sending her to a brick and mortar school was bullying. And so that is something that, you know, people might consider part of normal socialization, but I disagree. You know, if, if, your child, a six-year-old, is you know struggling with something. They should be encouraged and you know given a loving environment to work through those things themselves. Um, and you know uh, what? One of the things I want to go back to is um, the previous mom talking about how she's coaching her child to self-advocate and do all that. That's something that you know I don't think would happen 
necessarily in a brick and mortar school um, because of the teachers being overwhelmed. So, you know, socialization speaking, I think that my child gets more out of me being able to tell her, you know, how, how do you think we could have handled this situation? And then she could think through, you know, different solutions rather than feeling put down and then shut down, um, number one. And then number two is that the socialization that she is getting through Taekwondo, through, you know, these um, activities where she's she has leadership roles is much more valuable um, than, you know, running around a playground with maybe one or two friends or, you know, sitting by herself and reading because, you know, she doesn't want to play the game and then nobody's there to, to bring her back and draw her in, you know. So um, that was one of our big things that we were concerned about. And I think if you're concerned about socializing, then it's online schooling doesn't necessarily prevent your kid from not being socialized. It's, it's a choice of how, what activities are you putting them in? How are you as a parent guiding them in their relationships with their existing friends? And also, um, you know, there, there were times where we met up with, um, we did participate in learning pods, which was great in kindergarten. Um, and next year she's in gifted. So there will be um, her gifted learning pod last year not we didn't do it as much because that didn't kind of get kick started until midway through the year. But um I think that you know the the school themselves provides a lot of opportunities um for the kids to get together and have a good time and do things that are not necessarily classroom based like she's in um STEM club and she looks forward to STEM club every week and she's in a group with these um since kindergarten of uh, same group of kids but they get to talk about all the different sciencey things that they love and so she's built some really strong friendships through um just participating in the clubs and so I think that um it's not really for us socialization is not a concern like or I should say a lack of socialization is not a concern that's great to hear. Anybody else want to add to that or have anything? Sure. I'm happy to add to it too. And I also want to answer the question we got from Facebook. So Ashley on Facebook asked, if you have more than one child, is there a parent campus for each child? And I'm wondering if she means Canvas. So I have a Canvas Observer account. I have two kids. Um, I have one account and I have access to both of my kids through my Canvas Observer account. Um, when you'll get the directions on how to set that up at the beginning of the school year. And basically you go, your kids will log into their Canvas account. They will get a code from their Canvas that you enter into your parent account and then you're an observer on their account. And it's really simple um, to do. So I can swap back and forth between each of my kids and see anything I need to see um, very easily. Um, and so to speak to the socialization piece, um, we have, um, you know, extracurricular activities that we do. My daughter is a singer, so we had her join in Phoenix Children's Chorus, and that's been an amazing experience for us that she has a lot of fun with that. Um, both of my kids do esports through our local YMCA. Um, and um, honestly, the, the socialization opportunities that ASU Prep Digital provides are really incredible because the kids build these relationships with each other during their Zooms. They do lots of small group activities and they're split up. They're not always with the same kids, so it's not the same kids over and over. And they, um, they definitely are um, getting to know all the kids in their class. Um, my daughter now going into her third year, so she's going into fifth grade, her third grade class, she still is in contact with a bunch of the kids that she was in third grade with, and some of them are not in ASU Prep Digital anymore, and they're still friends. Um, we've started meeting up in person with some really great friends that we've had through ASU Prep Digital the last couple of years, and that's been um, some really amazing friendship opportunities, not only for my child, you know, my children, but for me 
And um, learning pods for us was, was not as successful two years ago when she was in third grade, my daughter's in third grade, but last year in fourth grade, we made um, a really great group of friends that um, honestly, my daughter's in her learning pod Zoom right now still, they are doing it twice a week all summer. Um, they had so much fun together that they wanted to just keep meeting up, even though it wasn't school related anymore, you know, they're just <laughs> hanging out. So um, that's been really fantastic for us in, in terms of socialization. But, um, you know, both of my kids, they um, connect with other kids w over something during the school day. And then they like, they're like, mom can you know my kids don't have phones yet but they're like mom can I give your phone number so we can talk to so-and-so you know on the weekend and um you know my son's played Minecraft online with people you know frequently that's been a fun thing for him they connect with other kids on Roblox I know not everybody likes Roblox but that's you know they my daughter goes and does um oh gosh Kumo space I think it is where you know they can chat and video chat with each other on that too um and play games together and um gim kit and oh my gosh all the things they find all the things <laughs> <laughs> they know they know way more of these um online games now than I could ever even imagine and um they have a lot of fun together with the other kids and I have seen no lack of socialization since we've been at ASU Prep Digital and it was a concern of mine when we started I wasn't quite sure you know what what it was going to be like for us and what it was going to be like for them but um it, it's ended up being great that's fantastic awesome yeah and to quickly add on to that I'll, I'll make mine try to make mine short <laughs> um too um, like just how the others have said too, also there's socialization even going on during like life class time. So the students are able to go into breakout rooms and be in a small group and figure out the problem or how, you know, work together and collaborate and everything. So I really like that aspect of it as well. Um, huddles include socialization time, usually like when mom mentioned some songs or dancing and things, or, or there might be like a poll of the day and, you know, which one's your favorite and why, explain your reason why and stuff. And so, um, those types of things, uh, different teachers might do different things too. things like lunch bunch, who gets to have lunch with their teacher once a week, you know, in brick and mortar. So like, that's really fun for, for the kids. They love that, um, birthday celebrations, anything extra that the teacher might do or in-person meetups, some of the teachers might do that. Um, and then they, of course, make friends. So they're able to socialize virtually, but then you can meet up and, you know, my son, you know, hangs out with um, friends he's made through online school and, and they, you know, hang out in person and they, um, you know, have play dates and stuff and his regular friends too, of course, and through sports and piano lessons and everything he's, you know, he's able to socialize as well. And the school also, aside from learning pods, um, they do also have um, clubs. And they have LSE homeroom each week where they usually do fun things together. Um, they have specials as well. So they, so they do have um, different different things where the students are able to, to definitely socialize. Oh, you muted. I was doing so good too. That was the first time I did it the whole time. Um, so let's, we only have about five minutes left. So let's just do one really quick round robin. Um, if you could give a new parent to online learning, like one tip or trick that it was going to make, you know, make a big difference in their experience, what would it be? I'm going to sneak in too. My first one <laughs> Set aside a dedicated space for your kids for learning so that it, school feels separate from real life at home um, so that when the school day is over, they can disconnect from that and, and live their real life. And my second one is when you get dates of things that are upcoming, like one of the other parents said, I got something that said a month from now, you might need X, Y, Z to do a science experiment, put it on your calendar right away so you don't forget. Um, they do send frequent reminders and things, but um, they sneak up on you. So it's always something that I've done to, you know, when you, when your LSC is planning a, you know, a class party for something, put it in your calendar because they're going to make some sort of fun treat that your kid's going to be really upset if you forgot to buy the ingredients for it. So just saying, put it in your calendar early. <laughs> Those are great. <laughs> I agree with all of that. <laughs> and then I'd like to say too that it's like it's definitely a partnership between families and school. 
Um, and so my big, biggest tip would be to um, just check that communication from teachers and LSEs. They usually send out like a weekly update email and it's just great, it takes a few minutes. I usually go through and, I, and I'm informed. I usually don't have any questions afterward. And like many of the other um, moms said, the teachers are so easy to get a hold of. They respond quickly. So if you do have a question or want clarification on something, they're able to respond right away. But the LSEs include lots of reminders too about you know logging attendance and checking Canvas, being a, a Canvas observer as a parent. Um, and the teachers will have you know important information on the playlist to see the schedule and for the you know upcoming see what's coming up for for the upcoming week and everything and everything that you might need for that. Um, so I think those are great. And also um, I would add um, checking grades at least weekly. So we try to check as a family grades once a week and it's just helpful. It's just so quick. We're able to see, you know, if there's, oh, we forgot, you know, accidentally forgot to do an assignment. That's okay. Let's get it done as soon as we have a chance. So this way we can stay on track and it just helps us so that my son's able to stay on track and not, you know, fall behind. He's able to, you know, do those assignments as he's learning those new skills so that he's able to succeed. So I definitely recommend um, checking grades. As a parent, I would just say, don't stress. <laughs> like it could be a little overwhelming once you start, but once you're in the routine, your student is going to pick up the technology aspect so fast. They, they will log in. They'll know where to get their Zoom meeting link. They'll know how to get to this other breakout room. They'll know what they need to do. So let them do it. It's amazing watching what they can do on their own. I'm just going to piggyback on what Gary said, because I, that's so important. I think um, some of our friends, they, the parents attitude, if their attitude was poor, then the child's attitude was poor towards the technology. And the thing is, we really just need to trust our kids because they basically were born with iPads and you know they they know what they're doing and so if we just say you know what you guys got this and i you're going to do great then they're going to do great um but if we our attitude is like oh this is so frustrating which you know sometimes it can be but it doesn't have to be then they're going to adopt whatever attitude we have so i think the biggest tip would be just you know have a good attitude and trust your kids Wonderful. I would say everyone, what every parent said here is absolutely true. Um, like, you know, don't stress, let your kids kind of take the reins, have that dedicated space, um, stay on top of the grades. I do that weekly as well, or I'll do it like daily, maybe if I have time and I'm like, hey, did we finish all of our assignments? And sometimes I give her like, hey, do you want to work seven hours today instead of six? And then if you do seven hours, you know, four days a week, you're already up to 24 or not 28, sorry, can't do math today. <laughs> um, you know, that you only have a smaller day on Friday and then whatever you're, when you get completed, you can be off with your friends from other schools that are maybe have early release or whatever. So I always give like kind of something, a reward of like, hey, let's just make it through this week. Maybe it's a tough week. Maybe we got projects. Maybe we have all these things. But like, if we can just like, you know, kind of give them a little space and and some time. And, and the first thing that I was always worried about, I guess, when I came into the program was how much time she was taking away from her computer during things. And I was like, you're never going to get this work done she always got it done within the six hours. So like, don't stress. You just kind of have to like stay on top at the beginning. And then once they're they're in the program and th they kind of know their schedule, like my daughter just wakes up now every day. She's ready at eight o'clock. She logs in. I don't have to do anything for her. Like she's, she's on and she knows where to go. So don't stress. And also, I just want to let y'all know, specials are awesome. We had this amazing art teacher this past year and music teacher. I'm excited to learn the PE teacher. But, um, you know, if you guys are worried that you're not, your kids aren't going to get specials, they do. Wonderful. Well, I wanted to thank you all so much again today for, for giving up some time in your afternoon to spend it with us and, and getting to learn a little bit more about your experiences. It's so wonderful to hear that all your children are thriving. Um, at ASU Prep Digital. Um, obviously, we're really proud of the program, and it's so nice to hear from 
you know, the people who are living it every single day. Um, so thank you so much. I hope you all enjoyed the last few days of your summer. If you're interested in joining ASU Prep Digital, um, please check us out. On, uh, you can find us through any of our, um, obviously, our social media pages. You can visit our website at asuprepdigital.org. Um, and you can also call our admissions team at 844-692-3372. So thank you all again so much. I appreciate your time. Take care. Bye.